I'm Ryan and I'm a model builder for TechLink International. Today I'll be going through an overview and a quick demo of a data hub model for TechLink's Anaplan Expert Developer Series. What is a data hub? A data hub is a central model that allows for all data to be stored, separated, and then sent to other models. There are numerous benefits of a data hub model and these include maintaining consistent hierarchies across all models, all data is easily accessible to admins. You will be able to avoid sparsity because all data will be loaded and stored into lists and 2D modules, and having all the data in one location accelerates future Anaplan builds. The features of a data hub include having all metadata centralized. This includes transaction and master data. Data can be collected from other systems, including SAP. It allows for data validations and future data analysis, as well as the standardization of naming and structures of lists and the synchronization of data through the use of ALM. If there are any questions on ALM, please be sure to check out some of our other Anaplan Expert Series videos. There are some things to keep in mind with Data Hub. There is a potential loss of data. Records with identical codes will overwrite to ensure that this does not happen. All new records that are entered into the data hub will need to have a unique identifier. Also, with transaction data, it is best pra practice to clear out the current module and only load the current month. If all months data are loaded into your other production models at once, this can be a lengthy process. So by only loading the current month, you will be able to mitigate this issue. Also, in a data hub, you will want to have clear naming conventions. Each action and module should clearly define its purpose and should include whether the data is master or transactional. One last thing to keep in mind is that a data hub is not used for reporting. It is only used for the storage of data. This is what the landscape of a hub would look like. Data comes from other systems. It may be SAP or something else. It will then be integrated into the data hub and then this data can be dispersed to other models, such as a balance sheet model, an FP&A model, or a supply chain model. Now, let's go through a quick demo of our data hub model. As you can see, I've created a dashboard to easily update the data and the hierarchies in our data hub. Let's begin with an example of cost center transaction data. As you can see from this module, there are currently no records but we can go back to our dashboard and we can upload a flat file with this month's cost center transaction data. We can run this process and we can go back to our module and see that the records have now been populated. One thing to point out are the tier IDs. They are a concatenation of month, cost center, sales organization, and distribution channel. It was set up this way so that each record would be unique so all of our data would load. Another thing that we can do with our transaction data is split it by region based on indicators. Let's say that we have a couple different production models we want to send this data to. We wouldn't want our Europe data being loaded to our United States model. So we can create indicators and based on those indicators can create individual views based on the subsets of data. As you can see from the data we just loaded, only three of those records are applicable to the United States. So we would only want these three records being loaded to our United States production model. Another thing that you may have noticed about the cost center transaction data in this module it is only for the current month of April 2018. But we do have the rest of the month's data available in our archive module. As I mentioned before, we wouldn't want all of these records in the current month that are loaded to our production models. This is to save time. As you can see here, there may only be a couple of records, but in actual data hubs, there may be hundreds, if not thousands of records. If all these were loaded every time into the production model, this would be a lengthy process. Also, Admins may have made manual updates to the data in those production models for past months. So if all this data was loaded in every time, 
those manual changes may be affected. Let's take a look at the process that we used to load our transaction data. As you can see, there are five actions. The first action will delete all of the data in the current month module. Then the next two actions will load the TRIDs into the cost center transaction data list and then load the data into the module. This process is then repeated for the archive list and archive module. Now let's look at updating one of our hierarchies. As you can see in our cost center hierarchy there are currently only five cost centers. Let's say that our business wants to update this and add a couple of cost centers. We can go back to our dashboard and we can select another flat file to add a couple of these cost centers. We can run this and as you can see three new cost centers have been added. We can go back to our hierarchy, refresh it, and see that these three new cost centers have been added. If there are any questions, please contact us at anaplan at techlink.com.